What's up YouTube? Today we're gonna to take a look at my Pocket Cinema Camera 4K rig. I've used it for creative projects, corporate shoots, and commercials. So before we go into how exactly this is put together, I just wanted to kind of cover why I set it up this way. My style of shooting is a lot of handheld. For me, building a big, heavy setup with the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K really gives you that cinematic, big, heavy feel when you're shooting handheld. I've also got a monitor on this side for director and client, which makes them super happy. <laughs> and then it also balances out the rig for when you are using an easy rig, when you hook it from the top handle, perfectly balanced. So the stuff we're gonna go over is obviously for black magic, but this rig works fantastic with mirrorless cameras or anything that's a similar body style. So without further ado, I'll take this thing apart and we'll go over the components. So to start out, I went with the Tilta camera cage, which is just the basic kit in Tilta Gray. And I also went with a Samsung one terabyte SSD, which will give you pretty much all day recording if you're using ProRes HQ, probably three days of recording if you're using ProRes LT for your corporate clients because space. I really like this basic kit because it comes with a nice SSD holder and the top handle screws down really nicely. It also has a 15 millimeter rod clamp, which we'll get to later. Super great handle, super strong, and is a great place to clamp on the easy rig. Next, I use this pretty generic base plate as a riser. Tilta also makes a riser specifically designed for this cage, but I found that this one's a little bit more universal and allows me to use uh, several different cages, several different cameras on this exact same rig. I'm using the Canon FD Primes on this one with a Metabone Speed Booster. I forgot to mention that. Um, they're really fun lenses, really great image quality. I'll probably end up doing a, a separate video about those. Next, I'm gonna add this small rig camera base plate that has a rod clamp. And this will allow us to run our 15 millimeter rods underneath the camera. Now that we've got our rod clamps on, we can go ahead and add the 15 millimeter rods. I'm using 12 inch rods for this build because it seemed to be perfect length. I'm using this Pro Aim Follow Focus. It's pretty good for the price. It's a little big and chunky, and I actually had to file it down to fit some of the lens filters I've been using. Um, but yeah, it's, it's held up for quite a while now and it's not too pricey. Next, I'll add these small rig universal hand grips. Next, I add this small rig universal shoulder pad. For power, I went with the Andy Cine V-Lock battery mounting plate. It also comes with the LPE6 dummy battery, as well as extra cabling for monitor and things like that, which is really nice. You might notice there's a weird gap here, but I actually kind of like this little gap because I can coil up my cables and slide them in here once I have those all wired up. I'm using these Indie Pro 98 watt hour V-Lock micro series batteries. So I only chose these batteries because they're sort of middle of the road in terms of price. And I've actually used them on other people's cameras before this and those cameras did not explode. So win for Indie Pro. To mount the monitor, I'm using this Axler 11 inch magic arm. I really like this magic arm because it comes with 15 millimeter rods on each end and it also comes with this mounting plate for the actual monitor that's more like mounting a camera. It's a super solid mount and it just tightens really nicely on this 15 millimeter rod. This is where the Tilta 15 millimeter rod clamp on the top handle really comes in handy. For monitor, I'm just using this Ninja 5. This is a really nice small form factor monitor, has the ProRes recording, HDMI in and out, as well as the option for 
using 12 volt power in. And while I don't need the ProRes recording for this camera, it's nice to have for when I'm using the Canons or the Sonys. To mount the second monitor, I'm just using this very generic uh, Magic Arm. It's a little bit shorter, and I would like to get something a little nicer than this for the second monitor, but for now, it totally works. For the second monitor, I'm just using this seven inch Lilliput. It's a very cheap monitor. Um, but it's totally fine for client and directors to just see what's going on. Decent image quality, the color may not be the best, and it might not be great in direct sunlight, but it's enough for the client or the director to see what's going on. This monitor uses so little power that I like using these smaller batteries because it actually helps balance out the rig by adding a little more weight and the battery lasts for three to four hours on one of these small batteries. And I just like to sit this nice and flush and kind of level with the camera. So that's it. That's the basic form factor of it. Nice, big and heavy. Easy to use on a shoulder. Nice access to the monitor. Nice access to the follow focus. So now all we need to do is add our power cabling and our video cables and we will be Gucci to go ski, ready to throw this thing on an easy rig and get to shooting. The first cable we're gonna run is for the dummy battery, which plugs in directly to the 7.2 volt on the side of the battery plate. And then the other end goes into the camera. And I know there are other power options, especially for the Blackmagic 4K. You could run a regular LPE6 inside the camera and then run a limo cable to the side, which would give you redundant power, but I've never had any issues um, running with this type of setup. So I didn't have to buy anything. I already had it from the Canon cameras and that's the way it's gonna stay. After we run power to the camera, we will run the included cable from the 12 volt to our main monitor here. Again, it just plugs into the side of the battery plate and the other end plugs into the monitor. And we'll do some cable management once we have everything run. Next, I'll run my video out first from my primary monitor to my secondary monitor. And I'll just run it from the out to the in. Then I will run my HDMI from the camera to the monitor. And the reason for this is I use an Atomos coiled cable, and I actually like to run the two cables that are already running to the monitor and wrap them up in the coil and make everything a little bit cleaner. Now to deal with all these cables that are hanging out the back. Grab the longest ones. And for this, I kind of just grab them all and start making little loops until they run into the gap that we've created under the battery. And this can take a little finagling, but the coils go nicely sort of underneath here. Then I'll use a bongo tie to just kind of keep them in that little gap. Now you do have the option of running an XLR adapter cable from the camera to any number of XLR based microphones. I just like to run this Rode VideoMic Pro with a little dead cat on the top to keep down the wind noise. And there's a nice cold shoe, hot shoe mount on the tilt -a cage where it fits perfectly. And I have noticed with this uh, microphone in particular, I need to run it at plus 20 decibels to get healthy levels on this camera. And I just sort of run this cable through the top handle to keep it out of the way. And as you can see, the rig is almost perfectly balanced. And there you have it, a nice balanced rig. I can pretty much take my hands off of this thing and it's like staying really level. I could even adjust this monitor a little bit, make it even better. But this is 
a really great handheld setup. We could put a tripod plate on the bottom to just make it real easy to pop off of this thing and pop onto a tripod. What I really like about this arm is it's super easy to just flip around and bring over top like this. And now I have a nice, easy, low angle, still staying super level with my little bubble level. And we're golden. This thing's ready for pretty much anything. The battery life is four to six hours if you're rolling like constantly. Um, this monitor is nice and easy for anyone on my right side to see. I've got easy access to the handle, easy access to the, the follow focus here. And you can see it's really easy to go from just like low angle shooting like this to pop up on the shoulder. It's just a hell of a lot of fun to shoot with a rig like this. And I know it's, it's bigger and bulkier than a lot of other people's BMPCCC rigs. <laughs> but for me, it just works. And the footage, like it's so sort of big and heavy that the footage comes out nice and cinematic handheld. Anyways, that wraps up this video. Hit subscribe. But let me know in the comments if you have a specific request to cover something more in depth. And I'll see you guys in the next one.